day today, sunny. Uh, got a nice flex fit hat going out to Adam McGovern from Rush, New York. Uh, I don't care what the website says, they are not sold out. I've got them. Uh, also to a calendar or a silhouette to Adam, I don't remember which. And let's see. Yeah, he must have got a calendar. And then a filthy horse silhouette to John Kushner, St. Louis, Missouri. And last but not least, an equipment calendar to Brian Garland out of Tamarack, Florida. Thank you boys for supporting old Pater. Hey, flex fit hat. These are nice ones. These aren't the auto flex fit. These are Port Authority. Way nicer hat. Uh, they're in the store. It says they're sold out. They're not. So just order one anyway. If it won't let you order it, just put in the special instructions. That's what you want. Anyway, these will keep you from getting the coronavirus. Just go check out my last Con Expo video. I gave one to Logger Wade, and he ain't got the coronavirus. So go order one, man. So I got some boxes to add today. Uh, got a hat going to Ackland in Sheffield, Vermont. And Derek in Holland, Michigan. Uh, they've all ordered the uh, J. Paydirt antiviral construction hats so go to my store and get one now so you don't get the flu <laughs> so if you haven't bought you one of these uh anderson hats the antiviral hats you need to go do it man i really hate to see you get this virus and get sick so run on over to my store and get one now supplies are limited oh and pick you up a calendar or two uh, I throw free strict stickers in with all your orders, man. You get free stickers. Oh, good cold, whatever it is, Tuesday morning. I'm on my way to Coeur d'Alene. I should have got up earlier. <laughs> hey, my pay dirt box is full. I want to thank you guys for that. You've overloaded me here. Got a bag full on the front steps. Uh, got one going out to Chris uh, Smith in forest virginia jeff reed in lenore north carolina josh Rowland in dublin georgia good lord i can't hold this paper uh caleb caravonen from battleground washington jesse shackelford from holly springs north carolina keith nolan from lincolnton north carolina uh andrew garcia from frankfurt illinois and my buddy Mike Griffith from New York. Hey, I want to show you. Scroll over. This is how you order a flex fit hat. <laughs>
That is one of the coolest bike trails you will ever ride. If you ever come across I-90, you're going to want to stop and do that trail. Now, I don't know if they rent bikes or not. I'm assuming they do. You have to go up the top of the pass. Uh, there's like a little ski resort there. And so, you, it's mandatory you have to have a helmet. So, I think you can rent the bikes and the helmets there if you don't have a bike. And then you got to come back down this way on the Montana side, down the road like five miles or something, uh, to get to the start of it. But you go through these old uh, train tunnels. Uh, one of them, I think, is like a mile and a quarter, mile and a half long you ride through. So you've also got to have a light on your bike. Anyway, it's just really, really cool. I highly recommend that on your bucket list if you ever come through here. Hey, so isn't technology cool? So I'm driving through the mountains here of uh, Montana, uh, just about to Idaho border, northern Idaho, and I'm getting text messages uh, from one of my friends in Australia. He's sending me pictures. Uh, you know, that's the coolest thing about uh, the friends I've made is they're all over the world. And uh, I don't know how many of you have friends in other parts of the world that send you pictures and text messages. <laughs> that's just totally awesome. Uh, the traffic is just absolute nil. 90% uh, 90, 90 trucks is about all you see just passing a couple here anyway I'm betting the truckers love it so I heard the other day that uh, truck accidents are way 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 down and uh, trucks are running uh, they're not having to comply with the hours of service rules anymore they're driving however they like so what does that tell you it's not the amount of hours they drive it's not the individual the biggest factor that's causing the accidents I'll bet money when this is all done that they come to the conclusion is cars four-wheelers four-wheelers are causing the crashes with trucks Okay, I lied to you. It's not the Sacagawea Trail. It's the Hiawatha Trail. Hiawatha. Anyway, it's this exit right here with this state shed over there. I don't know if you can see it. This is where you get off going to the freeway and follow the road. It's exit 5. So it's 5 miles this side of the Idaho border into Montana. So here's exit zero. Lookout pass. So this is the one you get off of, across the overpass. And there up there on the left is the little teeny ski resort. That's where you rent bikes and helmets. Chairlifts ain't running today. They got snow. Just ain't running. Part of it right here. 
Richard, G, G eight nine D. That's pretty cool. So I got my Google Maps on. All of a sudden, it come on and said, "There's a speed trap ahead." So I tapped the brakes, slowed down the speed limit, which was 65. I thought it was 70. Sure as crap, there was an Idaho State cop sitting there, and then it asked me, "Is he still there? Or is it still there?" I tapped yes. So how does that work? People drive by and see the cop there and go to Google Maps and report it that he's sitting there. That's better than radar, man. Better than radar. Turn right onto US 95 North. Signs for Canada, Sandpoint. <laughs> we, got a, we got a neighbor a half mile down the road and you're just in fire. What well, that turbo will make a terrible wine. That's what it makes a pretty wine. M hurt make your ears hurt That's that. That's one of the reasons I know it's good. <laughs> that high pitched wine they make. I know it's fooling up. Strapped on, covered up. I hope this makes it. Any of those of you that are truckers, you can grade me on my tie down job here. <laughs> Ace Bonino. Hey, look, Texas Roadhouse, Harbor Freight Tools. Bingo. Ah, this thing, man, I sure hope this. Rides okay. I sure hope so. <clears throat> That's some crazy crap. Yuck. This is gonna make this trip miserable. Promise you. <sighs> it's an awesome day this morning. Lots of good snow. Didn't really want that. Coeur d'Alene is a beautiful town. This is just a beautiful area up here. If you ever get a chance to come see it and go out on the lake for one of those little cruise thingies, I highly recommend that. Put that on your bucket list. I was really hoping for some sunshine today, this morning, but that ain't gonna happen, I can see. <coughs> No, I don't have the coronavirus. I do that every morning till I get my motor running. Get your motor running. Head out on I-90. I'm up to 50. Oh, I really got to watch my following distance. Last thing I want to do is have to pound on the brakes. I'm pulling back forward pretty good on that engine but 
I don't want that to slip, slide, and tip over or something. That'd be a disaster. I guess talking to these guys, <clears throat> this area of northern Idaho is just exploding in growth. I don't know what's driving it. I mean, you have logging here and tourism. What else is here? Oh, you know what else? I I wish I'd have more time here. I would have loved to have uh, come and found Chuck Driver on YouTube. <clears throat> he lives up here, logs. Actually, quite a bit of traffic this morning. <clears throat> I didn't think I'd see this much, but I'll bet once I get out of Coeur d'Alene here, I'll bet it dies off unless these people are traveling traveling clear over to Missoula to work or something. I don't know. It's 8.30. If you're not at work, you're late. You're fired. You're fired with real fire, dang Well, that engine is still back there. She's just still riding. Looks pretty good. You know, I was... So I stayed at the La Quinta. They put me on the fourth floor. I never heard anybody on the entire fourth floor. I was probably the only one there. Excellent clean room. Thank you, Stephanie, for cleaning that. You did a good job. So this is Interstate 90, which is a major, major freeway across the United States. And there is hardly any traffic. As you can see, there are no vehicles in front of me. I can see one pair of headlights way, way behind me. I'm going to stop in Wallace and maybe fill up with fuel. Wallace is a cool town, man. Like I was telling you before, if you ever come past here, come on down. Just drive through downtown. It's pretty cool. Old mining town. The Trailside Cafe says it's open. That's tempting. To go eat there. Unless, yeah, they got a sign in the window. Probably says, nope. No dining in China. Take you on a tour so you can see the freeways all elevated up there. Motel. Red Light Garage. See, this is just a cool town. I'm not kidding you. Just a cool town. I love it. Would you take a drive around town? How's that? And then come back. So you can see Wallace. You can see Mr. Wallace. Don't enter. Pretty cool. I love it. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So I checked the motor. Um, I've got four straps, big ratchet straps on it. Two pulling back, two pulling forward. If she's riding really good, hasn't moved a bit. I had to put it in four-wheel drive, spinning wheels in this slushy, wet stuff. It's 25 degrees up here, so this stuff's starting to stick. So we're reaching the top of Lookout Pass here. Get down the other side, we'll be done with this nonsense. No more of it. <clears throat> okay, now it's all downhill. There goes your sticker, Brandon, on the back of that pro quality truck right there. Down the highway. In Montana. <laughs> and those other stickers are in the bathroom. Going going through McDonald's with a 1693 on the trailer. Tell you what, that corner back there was murder. <laughs>
kind of went up on the curb a little. So I made it home to the Pay Dirtarosa. Uh, that thing rode like a lump of lead on that trailer. Um, there's the dowel pin. <laughs> poked down in the deck um, the only thing that it it's done that it looks like to me and this is what I was worried about was the back end came over this way I think yeah it did because of the way I'm pulling on it anyway it, it rode really well these straps all stayed pretty tight and I had the plenty of straps on the tarp on top to keep the water away from it so here we are So this is a kind of a different 1693. Got some stuff on it I've never seen before. Number one is that two-piece pan. Uh, truck engines always used a one-piece aluminum. Industrial equipment, scrapers, loaders use a two-piece but not literally two-piece. What, what they have is a plate that goes all the way to the back, a thin plate, and then a small... You know, I, I know why they did that. Exactly. Because this is a front sump engine, and your pump's still back there. And so you've got to have... See that? you got to have clearance there for that pump to sit in. And then you've got two tubes that go back here one for the return uh, pressure relief and then one for the suction bell so that's why that's that way see I just got to talk myself through it <laughs> then uh, way different fan drive way down low um, don't know what they had on there probably just a big uh, non-reversible fan looking at the pulley size on it it looks like about a well it's probably over a one-to-one -one ratio um no no it'd be an underdrive let me take that back because your driven pulley is way bigger than your drive pulley so it was an underdrive didn't run as fast as the motor and that's different from trucks now the other one is this interesting one see this is your thermostat housing and you've got a hose clear down here it goes in the pan soon comes out right there so um, I I'm baffled at that one is that supposed to be so if you plug this thing in if it had some kind of heater that it is there a coil in there that heats the oil yeah I don't know had a temperature probe right here 
Looks like it was set up with a bunch of Murphy switches. That would be typical of military. Um, other than that, oh looky there. Oh, let's see. Yeah, that's a hydraulic air fuel ratio. I was thinking for a minute that was the old non-hydraulic. <coughs> so they've done a extensive paint job on the tags and everything. I can't really read them. I don't know what that's. Oh, this is a 27U. One, two. 128? Wow, that's a pretty low serial number for a power unit, 128. So, um, I didn't take the clutch or the pump drive in that. I had no use for it. So, they can keep it. Um, that's interesting there. Electronic tack set up. This one, for some reason, had the cover and the adapter for a rear mount uh, power steering pump. So, not sure what that was about. Maybe some kind of a, a small auxiliary hydraulic pump or something. And the other interesting thing is it has an air compressor. And I think I know why, because he said it had an air-operated clutch on it. So... In the video, you saw that they started this up and ran it, which it was less than two minutes, and he had run it before, and I said, did you put water in it? And he said, no. Well, this engine's different than any other engine. This has pre-cups in it, and there's O-rings in those pre-cups to keep the water out of the engine, and that's the one thing I'm really worried about is those pre-cups, that's where the combustion takes place, and they get hotter than a pistol. And it could have melted those O-rings, and it also could have damaged the upper uh, liner band O-ring. Uh, you just should never, never, never run an engine without water. I don't care what. Not a diesel engine. Not when you have liners and O-rings and pre-cups with O-rings. Never run one without water. He just had to make it run and show me how it ran. I don't know why. Uh, I would have taken it just the way it was. But anyway, that's, that's my two cents. So what are we going to do with this? Um, I'm thinking I'll probably put water in it, see if it holds water, make sure it ain't running in the engine or down the crankcase. If it is, well, then she's just screwed. Uh, then it's got to come apart and get new O-rings in it. If it doesn't leak, uh, if we use this in a scraper, all this stuff off the front has to come off. Uh, dampener, pulleys, fan drive. That's a truck water pump. That'll go oil cooler, all that stuff. Uh, fuel system will come off. Don't need that shut off. Um, the filters come off. Uh, the whole back end will have to get changed. So at that point, we'll take the cam cover off, uh, change the O-rings in the pre-cups. Um, just to be on the safe side, new gaskets, reseal the cam cover, reseal the whole back end. After cooler will have to go. Air compressor will go because it's not set up to drive in the uh, scraper type housing. So anyway, for 3400 bucks, there's a lot of parts anyway. So... <laughs> I thought it was interesting. Here's another thing I've never seen. I've never seen an oil filler cap like this on a cam cover. It's actually a good idea. I'm surprised Cat didn't, I think they do, later models had, may have had some, um, covers all over on the top here, which would have been a good idea so you could get in and adjust valves or do whatever without taking these bolts out and losing your gaskets. That was one of the drawbacks to these. I always wish 
they'd have put the same ceiling system on this cam fence and this cover as they did the 3406. That would have made that just a whole lot easier to work on. Or an, a separate cover that went over the top so you didn't have to, you know, mess the gaskets up in here and potentially mess the one up in the back for the cam drive back in there. So it's got some tags on here. I don't know what they say. I'll have to see if I can get the paint off. But I'm assuming this thing was probably a green or a blue color being as it was military i highly doubt it was yellow i don't know that but they slopped plenty plenty of good paint on her there hey everybody hope you enjoyed the little adventure i took to northern idaho <laughs> i know i did um got an awesome deal on that engine uh, i want to thank paul uh for selling it to me and matt for helping out and get it loaded and everything that was awesome uh, want to talk about some of my awesome subscribers uh, I want to start out with Chris Miskey he's from Salt Lake City Utah uh, got to meet Chris down at Con Expo uh, Chris has a 72 W900A he also calls old Kenny uh, anyway thanks Chris uh, Cody Sicaria from is a SCIO Ohio SCIO <laughs> Is that how you say that? Thank you very much for subscribing, Cody. Uh, Garth Button from Hubbard, Ohio. Thank you, Garth. Phil Cooley from Cowra, New South Wales, Australia. Thank you, Phil, for subscribing. And Les Francis from, okay, I'm gonna butcher this, Les. Uh, Waipapa, New Zealand? Waipapa, I, <laughs> that looks Hawaiian to me almost, you know? Why, why, Papa? Please tell me how to pronounce that, somebody. I, I gotta know. Anyway, and then last but not least, one more Australian. Jeff, the Aussie, Jeff Rookyard from New South Wales in Australia. Thank you very much for watching Clear Down There. Uh, you know, I really wanna come down there in June. Uh, Gavin Hand, Handley, uh, he said if I came down, he'd show me a great big dirt moving project and some scrapers, but I'm still a little bit concerned about what's going to happen with this stupid China virus. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, I hope you guys are fair and well and you're healthy and uh, stay away from the germs. Hey, 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 got some new goggles. These are transitions and progressives and then they darken. <laughs> I really like them. Anyway, you know how it is to get old, you can't see. Um, I want to mention to you about my hat, boy, I sure appreciate you guys buying all the hats lately. Uh, got the old Kenny hat. Uh, this is the Flex Fit. It is now available in the store, that's fixed. Uh, the Anderson hat, like I got on. Uh, the charcoal and black one. And the yellow and black. And then the black on black. These are Richardson 112 hats. Really nice hats. Anyway, so I'm working on getting some t-shirts made. Uh, got some cool stuff I'm going to put on there. So I'll get those up and in the store as soon as I get them done. Um, I am hustling trying to get it done. So appreciate your support. Also, too, you can get a Anderson Construction calendar in the store along with a swimsuit calendar or the filthy horse silhouette. Um, I finally figured out how to verify my website with Google. So if you'll go right over here in the corner of my home page, there's a little square there. Click on that, that will take you to the store. I'm hoping the icon pops up here right shortly so you can go straight to it. And I can also link my website at the end of my videos. So watch for that. Bye. Uh -huh.